Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I can save all of us a lot of time by pointing to you, pointing out to you the letter that's at the beginning of the order of service for this afternoon, which uh, says a word about this liturgy. You could just read that because I believe it and I'm grateful that today we have begun to work at that at the Metropolitan New York Synod on that kind of accompaniment that we need to do for immigrant people, legal or not. The book of Leviticus, as quoted in that letter, calls them aliens. And it helps to remind me that my ancestors also came to this country as aliens, and at least one of them that I'm aware of as an illegal alien. So you can read that later, and I'll ask you now for a few minutes to just give me your attention. Right now, I want to invite you to what our Lord Jesus says in Matthew's Gospel. Because I find Matthew a little annoying, a little challenging. Because Jesus in Matthew's Gospel wants us to not only accompany those in need, but go beyond that. Jesus wants us to enter into relationship with them. So I get annoyed. Life is never as clear-cut as Jesus in Matthew's Gospel makes it out to me. I cannot sort things out the way he does. And whenever I start meditating for preaching on a Gospel reading like this, God turns the heat up and makes me a little uncomfortable. Like this one. My dear wife Lois is in Seattle uh, for a board meeting at the moment. So Thursday evening after the bishop's retreat, I came home and went to Target to get some food. <laughs> I was not dressed in the uniform of any kind, but and that often is a magnet for people to come up to me. A woman came up to me while I was meditating on what kind of hot dogs to buy. <laughs> Lois was out of town, so I knew I could get away with that. <laughs> the woman came up to me standing there at the freezer case, and she said, Hello, honey. <laughs> and I had never seen her in my life. Hello, honey, could you give me some money to buy hot dogs too? She had a bunch of celery in her little target basket. I just want some supper, she said. So in a heroic gesture that was somewhat qualified, I gave her five bucks. And along with it, I gave her an exasperated sum that I regret even now. Was that the right thing to do for me there at Target? Now, Matthew would have known, which is why he's so annoying to me. But Matthew also gets my attention. He seems so sure about what is right and what is wrong, about who is blessed and who is cursed, about who is in and who is out in this kingdom of God. And I'm hoping that I will end up not with the doomed goats, but with the happy sheep. And that's when I make into law what is this gospel. And that's a problem. Because to read this story carefully is frankly to notice that both the sheep and the goats are totally baffled. 
The biggest surprise in this story is that Jesus is not just somewhere saying with the sheep, but Jesus is everywhere. And especially with the least important people who fill our days, whoever they are, even with that woman at Target. God sees, God knows, and God wants us to see and know too. Isn't that the heart of a compliment of what we're doing of Amparo? Jesus is present in every single person whose path crosses ours, and particularly in those who are in need, whom we would never expect. So how do we live knowing that? How do we find the courage to get up in the morning knowing that every pair of eyes that pleads with us that day will be Jesus' eyes? Everyone here is looking at us with Jesus' eyes. Everyone at the courthouse will have Jesus' eyes. Everyone at Federal Plaza will have Jesus' eyes, asking us for recognition, attention, time, accompaniment. How do you deal with it? We are asked to wrestle with that fact, to let it challenge us, to let it unsettle us, and who knows, maybe even encourage us and strengthen us. Jesus is so present with us, and we have such unlimited opportunities to meet him and serve him that in some ways, like standing with immigrants, just standing there silently at the Dunkin' Donuts near Federal Plaza, some ways we may not even understand. And the only way to tell if they are really Jesus' eyes we're looking at, is to look at them. To risk that moment of recognition that may break your heart, or change your mind, or make you angry, or help you amend your life, whatever effect it has on you, that seems to be what God is calling us to today. In our sin. In our country, may God have mercy on our country. God is calling us to look, to seek, to seek Christ in all people. I will tell you something you already know. Sometimes when you look into those eyes, like the eyes of that woman who called me honey at Target, on Thursday night, what you really see is your own helplessness. You see everything you have and everything you are in a stark, glaring light, the light of truth. Sometimes you see such gratitude that it reminds you of how much you have to be thankful for. And sometimes you see such a will to survive that you cannot help but admire it. These are all things we need to know about Jesus, about our immigrant sisters and brothers, about ourselves, especially those of us who daily deal with white supremacy and our already established citizenship and opportunity. The truth is, there is a relationship between the lives of those seeking a home and those who already are living in it. There is a relationship for us to recognize, to see each one of us will stand before Christ and find out who we are. But now, there is a relationship and it is up to each one of us to decide what we will do or not do about that. I am not alone. You are.
are not alone. We are all in this together. We are part of the great community of the body of Christ. Sometimes we do things together I alone cannot do. Because of my own health restrictions, I can't stand at Dunkin' Donuts. So I have to count on you. When my courage fails, I renew my commitment to stand with you when yours runs out. Amparo calls all of us to hold each other up and sometimes to calm each other down and to look those other people in their eyes and widen our embrace and welcome all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.